Hi, today we'll be talking about uh, functional response versus numerical response and the differences between the two uh, on its main features and um, how they're so distinct. And we're also, I'm also going to cover um, what different factors uh, functional response has or what different categories uh, uh, functional response has in terms of predator uh, versus prey. Uh, density. Um, so firstly, I'd like to start off with the numerical response, um, but basically numerical response is an increase in predator reproduction and survival. Um, and here, so I'll write increase. Um, it also is uh, an aggregation of predators in um, prey, heavily, heavily dense prey areas. So wherever prey is most popular, wherever the population size of prey um, is, wherever it is abundant, that's where the aggregation of predators is going to find. It's where it's going to be. Um, and so functional response is a little more distinct. Uh, the numerical response in that uh, functional response um, is more so classified um, as uh, the relationship between the rate of consumption of a single predator and its food density, its food source. So we can classify it or quantify it um, by looking at a relationship um, on a graph. Let me just redraw that. Okay, and so basically on a functional response graph you have number of um, a, a number of prey eaten by per predator. And then on the y-axis, you're going to have prey density. And so this graphical representation has three types of functional response responses. Um, and so uh, that is classified as type 1, type 2, and type 3 functional responses and so type 1 is more so linear than the rest um, this is due to um, the soap of the line will be equivalent to the producers attack rate or I'm sorry predators attack rate um, and this more so looks like type 1 looks like this very linear um, and so if for example a predator is eating two um, prey two different animals prey animals then the number of uh, predators also increases so um, it looks like this representation here and an example of this can be seen in um, herbivory um, on primary producers. So there's an abundance of primary producers, thus being an abundance in um, herbivores. Um, this is due to unlimited resource in primary producers. Um, a second functional response is type two, and um, type two is basically um, an increase in prey consumption uh, by the predator um, but then it will slowly start to plateau so it looks like this drawn 
so there's an increase, an increase, an increase, and then it starts to plateau. It reaches a certain point of um, capacity in which um, the predator can consume. And so this example, an example of this is seen in wolves and rabbits. Um, as wolves consume the rabbits, there will be a slow decrease in the prey because of the consumption, the amount of rabbits being consumed by the uh, prey. And so prey density will start to decrease as well because if there's no more rabbits to consume, then the chance of starvation is high. It's, it's likely. Um, and then so we have the last functional response, which is type 3. And uh, type 3 is similar to type 2, but um, predator response to prey is um, low at prey density. So it looks more so like this on a graph. And then it begins to also plateau at a certain point. Uh, and so this is type 3. This really happens um, when there's uh, an increase in predators, there's an increase in um, their search for um, increasing prey density. Um, and so we have this uh, trend in which there's an increase in prey density, increase in search, but then there's also that plateau because of the um, slow response. Uh, I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.